Um, I'm Bailey Hutchinson. I, I'm, I serve on the ARSL board and I live in Altus, Oklahoma. I'm branch manager here and I have two kids at home with me right now. So I have to mute myself or uh, you hear them. That is that. And uh, I'm Jane Somerville, um, also on the ARSL board. I live in Stanley, Idaho. And if it's okay with Bailey, I'm going to get us started. So uh, Stanley, Idaho is just over the mountain pass from uh, Sun Valley, Ketchum, Haley, Bellevue in Blaine County, which has the highest per capita rate of COVID-19 in the United States. Um, it's a ski resort area and many of those areas are highly infected. So number one, I'm right next door to them. Our library closed uh, March 16th. It uh, was really surreal to take the minutes and um, write that we were closed until further notice and staff will be paid for the duration of the pandemic. That was a, how we started this whole thing. Uh, shortly after that, uh, one of my sisters was diagnosed COVID-19 positive. She is now on the recovered list, so that's a huge relief. <clears throat> then we had a 6.5 earthquake. Uh, my favorite musician, John Prine, died from COVID-19. And last night, we just had news of a longtime family friend who passed from COVID-19. So I've been to a lot of these discussions statewide and with ARSL. Everybody's talking about what they're going to do for summer reading. Should we do curbside? I want to know how you all are doing. Because even though I'm not okay, I'm okay. Um, Chance at Cheney. Pardon me? I'm not sure what that was. Anyway, um, so I think a lot of us are feeling the same way that we're okay, but we're not okay. Um, I know a lot of us are really worried about our patrons, but I think we have to also be worried about ourselves. Um, I think there's a lot of things that people are feeling. Uh, I think some people are like totally dialed in on certain projects and then there's people like me who I'm really having a hard time focusing and concentrating. Um, I also really tend to overthink and I think other people are the other way, are um, kind of on autopilot. Uh, Bailey just posted this link that I think, uh, Bailey and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, um, that what we're feeling really is grief for our way of life and our new way of life. Um, so I think there's also probably people who are self-medicating, maybe uh, food, um, uh, alcohol, <laughs> or other choices. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm curious to know, I see in the um, buzz brain and having a hard time concentrating or focusing too. Um, I feel especially fortunate that I can come to my building to work because if I had to try and do anything at home, I, it, it would be completely, <laughs> completely useless. Somebody's eating too many M&Ms, a lot of people having trouble focusing, uh, anxiety overloads. So this was what I wanted to talk about today is that we really are not alone and we're all feeling the same thing. So, um, if anybody else wants to pop in and uh, talk about some of these things, that's what we're here for. Hey, Jane, it's so, so wonderful to see everyone. Uh, this is Mary from North Dakota. Um, 
And so I'm in a little bit different situation because I'm at the state library and about a third of my staff are still in the building. Um, and we're still mailing books out to patrons. Um, I'm sorry, I have these new headphones today and they're like ridiculously big. I'm rocking the Princess Leia look, uh, not liking them though. But um, one of the things that we've been doing at the State Library is trying to help our library community navigate, you know, this new norm. And so we've been doing twice weekly meetings with no agenda. Um, and it's been very helpful, I think, for people to just see other people when they're not, you know, when you're stuck at home. And if you, like, I, I see 10 people a day at work and I see my husband every day and I miss people. I can't wait till I can hug people <laughs> again, you know, and, and that's going to be wonderful. One of the things that we've been doing, because I think the library community in particular is really struggling with how do we work from home? Because so much of what we do is tied to physically moving books and physically working with patrons and answering reference questions and all of that. So a couple of the things that we've done to give staff, you know, other things to do. Um, our governor does a daily press conference. And so we're allowing staff right now to log into that press conference paid time so that it's, it's an hour a day, but it's an hour a day that they don't have to worry about, you know, what else am I going to do? The other thing that I just did yesterday is, oh, Jesse, girl, I feel you being a huge extrovert. Absolutely. Um, one of the other things I just did yesterday for my staff, if you're looking for things for your staff to do, I just gave everybody two hours a week of paid time to read a book. And then they are being required to write up a review for our monthly newsletter that we send out. That's something that every person that works in a library can do because even if you don't do a newsletter, you guys have Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got people you're interacting with. Again, someday we'll have people back in our buildings. So I just thought I'd share, you know, what we keep hearing from our state HR department is be creative, be creative. Well, there's only so many webinars you can watch before your brain is just going to explode and you're going to go blind, right? So I've been trying to think of what else can staff do beyond the norm. And so I just said to, to, stuff, to staff yesterday, read for two hours a week and do a book review. So I thought I'd share that as, you know, maybe a way that people can think creatively. So this is Jenny in Iowa, and we have, um, we're doing, working in, tandem, in teams as well. We have two teams of five working in the library every other day. So we're from home the other days. And um, our staff is doing Facebook Live from home um, multiple times a day, uh, different staff doing different things. Today, one of our collection development staff is in the building and he did how to dress your, how we dress your library books, um, which was really fun. And um, someone else said that their kids loved it, seeing how they got the book, we get the books ready to go out to the public from, straight from a Baker and Taylor box. Um, so that just finding creative ways to work, I think is super cool. And it's something I've just, been amazed at with libraries in particular, but um, across the board in different sectors too. Um, we've also, um, my staff is required to do some sort of learning from home whenever they're at home. And we have a shared sheet that we, uh, Google sheet that we put all of our learn from our professional development into with links so that other staff can then follow up with it as well. Um, I've also encouraged them to do some self care things while they're at home working, uh, meditating and things like that, so. Well, um, this is Bailey from Altus. Um, for those, I know not everybody's on video. Um, we've been doing a, to kind of touch on the whole mental health aspect of it. Um, uh, we've been meeting via Zoom or Google Hangouts with the staff and just as a time to vent. Um, it's not like a formal staff meeting because, um, and I've already heard several great ideas like the book covering thing. I think that's a really uh, neat idea. Um, but this is, it's been really neat to kind of see some of the staff slowly open up about how they're really feeling about having to work from home. Um, so at first it was just kind of like, well, okay, well, this is fine. It's going to be over in a couple of weeks. So, you know, we'll go back to work and things will be back, you know, as they should be. And since it's not that way at this time, um, 
I think it's been really good and um, cathartic for them to just have a, an opportunity to just talk about how it is making them feel and how, you know, how they're handling working at home because we have very different um, situations with our staff. And so um, I've really appreciated being able to do that and not sometimes I'm kind of like Jane, I've gotten really like I have all these projects and all these things I need to do and I can't having a hard time focusing on them because I'm also at the same time trying to process how I'm feeling about all of this. And I am a big feeler, not a thinker. <laughs> um, so uh, oh, I am a thinker, but you know, on the whole, I'm more um, and I am at the same time with having kids at home. So um, it could be overwhelming. I think it's nice to hear when other people are like, hey, I'm struggling too. I might be having more glasses of wine a night than I normally do for a minute. Thanks, Bailey and Jenny as well. Um, uh, it's interesting to hear from people who have staff. Um, I know there are some of you out there who don't have staff. Um, I do have an assistant, but we never work together. So that hasn't really changed for us. Um, and I, like I said, I'm very fortunate that I can come into my building. But once I get here, yeah, I kind of rattle around and I'll start something and uh, maybe the phone will ring or I'll go make a cup of tea and then I'll come back and start something mm -hmm. completely different. And uh, it's yeah. really hard to rein myself in. So um, I think we're all kind of feeling that way. Hey, Jane. And I just want to shout out to the, to, the, to the people who are doing this without staff that I think that's a little bit of an extra challenge for us. Absolutely. Jane, one thing that we're going to do that even our solo librarians can do. Um, so we had all of our staff take a picture of their workstation today. and. Those of you who know me can imagine that was right up my alley. We're do, we did some really fun pictures. We did a lot of Wilson from Home Improvement kind of pictures. Um, but we're going to do a day in the life of the state librarian. And we're just going to do random fun shots of me doing wacky things throughout the building. So like we have a stuffed teddy bear in the window for the teddy bear walk. I'm going to do a story time with the teddy bear and, you know, different things like that. And, and again, I think it's a way for you to still connect with your community and, and maybe not make your library quite so lonely because you'll be, you know, sniffing out all the corners, so to speak. Hey, Jane, this is Connie in Kansas. And um, something that we just discussed today, because we're so used to helping people in the community, um, my board's very flexible and we're taking a different tack. We've got staff members sewing masks because our local hospital has put out a plea for them. And they can count that as work time. So they're actually, it's, it's something different. Um, you know, they, the webinars and things and uh, doing the cricket and the bulletin board, they were getting tired of that. So this is a way that we can contribute back to the health of our community um, and, and do something useful and feel like we're making a difference. Um, and I might also, um, I went ahead and purchased a Zoom subscription through TechSoup. Uh, we're not buying books, obviously, at the moment. It's, it's a really good investment if you can afford it. That way staff, we've tried Skype and it's just kind of clunky. We can talk face to face every day. Uh, we're gonna do some other programming with it. So you people might, if they can afford it and don't have Zoom, might want to look into that because it's a relatively cheap investment to, to do that if you go through TechSoup. Uh, the first, the, at the emergency meeting where my board um, decided to close the building, they also directed me to purchase a Zoom subscription, and then they all freaked out about Zoom bombing. And um, for a short period, the Idaho Fish and Game and U.S. Forest Service uh, would not allow their employees to use Zoom, and they had to sign a contract saying they wouldn't use Zoom, and then Zoom got fixed. So uh, we are going to start. <laughs> at last, trying to do some Zoom things. 
I can, if I can just add on to what Connie was talking about. Um, I know some of our um, staff are sewing masks on their own time. Some of them have that skill. Um, we're not technically supposed to be working, uh, but we are getting paid, but um, there are lots of us who can't sit still. And so we're still doing everything that we can. So one of the things that we started doing, we just started this on, on Sunday. We are, um, I brought our two 3D printers home. And so we're printing these mask, mask extenders. And so just in the last four days, we've had requests for a thousand of them total. And we've been able to fill so far about 500 of those. Um, but I have developed a lot more partners because our little two um, Lulzbot minis can't, can't do that many at one time. So um, sure that's something that if anybody has 3D printers, there's um, patterns for these on Thingiverse that are really easy to get. And these are one of the things that at least I've found to be highest in demand right now. And we don't have a 3D printer. I'm, I'm here in LB in Michigan. And um, uh, what we've found is we do have a yarn craft club and we have a, a large quantity of yarn and a lot of people have yarn and crochet hooks. And there is a crocheted version that is about this long with buttons on the end. And I've heard from a couple people that they're digging into their mom's button basket that they inherited in the cookie tins and finding ways to do that. Our local hospital also has a plea out. I know some people are also 3D printing the headbands for the mask, which you can actually use like a 3M thing that fits on. And the other thing that we've seen um, a demand for is for the people who are making cloth masks at home, when you're folding, a lot of us can't buy, buy uh, bias tape anymore. So there's a lot of people who have bias tape makers that folds the fabric in and you just pull it right through the bias maker and underneath an iron. And the video I watched did 160 yards in 40 minutes. Um, but the thing is you can actually 3D print bias makers. Um, and it's a good way to, to get those in and to distribute those out. I actually earlier today just started a local mask makers group that we're feeding off of the larger Facebook group in the, in the Michigan one to try and connect people who have lots of fabric but don't necessarily have the time or the know-how to make various masks with those who do and the different types of masks. Um, the pleated ones don't work well for people with glasses because you end up fogging up your glasses. So there's some scoop ones that work better and whether the bias tapes on the top and bottom versus the sides, but also there are sort of duck build ones that can be used by the healthcare systems that are accepting them to extend the life of the M95s. Um, so just trying to coordinate those local resources. Um, but it, Folding bias tape was not something I would have thought of before I started doing this. It can take forever to do that, especially when a lot of people don't have elastic or rubber bands anymore. Um, so I've seen those extenders, but I've also seen the homemade crocheted ones that can work too. So there's lots of options. Can, um, can someone talk a little bit about what they're doing for their staff? Um, emotionally. Jenny Garner and I talked a little bit about last week um, at the end of this meeting and I only have three staff, one full-time, two part-time, and we're all struggling, um, but I feel that it's part of my responsibility to help them as much as that I can. So if anyone can suggest things that we can do, things that I can do with them um, or send them or anything. Ollie, I'll jump in. This is Kate saying uh, that with our team, I didn't do it right away. And we started working remotely a few days before our governor shut the state down. Uh, but it took me to the next week to say out loud and clear to them, I don't have expectations around productivity right now. I know everybody's going through a hard time. Let's show up for each other at the appointed time, keep in communication, move forward our projects and our work the best that we can as, as we're able to on a day-to-day -day basis. But just know clearly from coming from the top, I am not putting that expectation out there for anyone right now that you be, you're, oh, you're going to be able to focus even more. You should get as much or more done during this time. Mm -mm, not at all. And I, I hope, 
I don't know um, what that did for them, but I hope that it uh, let them put their shoulders down a little bit more and feel free to have those moments where they could have fuzz brain and not they were somehow betraying um, their employer. So along those same lines, um, I said the same basic thing. Uh, you know, I, I don't expect you to work a full eight hour day if you're at home. What I, what I hope is that you'll do the work that you need to get done, um, that, that needs to be done to keep the library operating under the circumstances of right now. And then I just said, I trust you. And I think letting your staff know that you trust them to do their work and you trust them to um, be there for the community because that's what we do. I mean, you know, we're the connectors um, and not being able to connect is a really hard thing for librarians. I think, you know, introverts, extroverts, it's about connection um, for us. So finding ways to help them connect, like Patrick mentions in, his, in the chat that he does a a, a water or a water cooler meeting in, in zoom we do the same um we we don't we do have a an agenda only because my staff requested that a long time ago because before i was the director they we had sometimes three hour rambling meetings of interruptions so we do keep to a, a little bit of an agenda but it's nothing it, it, we go off script as well um but mainly that that meeting is a check-in it's just checking in with everybody how are you doing today are you holding up what's your struggles what do you want to do when you're done and po some positives too who you want to hug first um you know they're those types of things I actually think, oh go ahead go ahead um i was gonna say i think the trust thing is a huge deal uh jenny you mentioned that um the director of our system has said the same thing you know that um we do have tasks and stuff that we can be doing and we are doing from home and we are um Sorry, I'm going to have my kids turn down their movie. Um, we are doing um, like daily check-ins and then the, um, you know, those, I like the idea of the more candid questions. Um, and we send uh, emails and photos of each other's pets and, you know, making it more personal and like we're actually kind of living our day-to-day -day lives with one another um, has been very helpful. Uh, I, I had posted in the chat that we're doing a share meeting once a week. Um, so last week it was, of course, books and author. This week it was digital media. Next week it's games. Uh, the week after that it's going to be places we've traveled with sharing pictures and stuff. Um, it's amazing how much that has broken down some barriers, though. And um, like staff are being very relaxed now. Like the word douchiness through what came out of a staff meeting yesterday. I was like, all right, we're going there. Last week, one of our staff members was talking about flipping people off. And, and, and I'll tell you all, it's a struggle to not like go into let's be professional people mode and be like, okay, people are just people right now. And so the other thing I want to encourage those of you who are in leadership positions is please, please be kind to yourself as well and give yourself some grace. And as much as you're worrying about meeting the needs of your staff or your patrons, as Jane mentioned, also make sure that you're taking care of yourself, whatever that looks like for you. Um, a, a couple of friends and I decided we're having a virtual dance party this weekend. I have no idea what that's gonna look like or how the heck it's gonna work. But, you know, think of ways to connect with people, not just with your staff, not just with your patrons, but how can you connect with people in your life as well? So just wanted to share that thought. Um, just sort of along those lines, this is Annie from um, upstate New York. I am working very hard to get over the fact that I'm not doing everything that everybody else is doing. Um, you know, the uh, vocational awe thing that we've been hearing a lot about. New York State has uh, extreme uh, lockdown conditions. They are really, you know, we are not allowed to put books out because we are not supposed to create opportunities for people to take unnecessary trips, things like that. And um, I was just talking to my, my program director and um, what you know what else can we do and she said you know 
uh, someone put a, I just saw a library put up a knitting class. There are 700,000 knitting class videos already. We really need to take a step back and think, okay, we've done enough. Let's promote what we've already done. Let's think about other ways we're connecting to the community, maybe through some community groups and things. Um, but really just be, be a little bit realistic about how important we really are, um, especially when we can't be open and, and really think about um, how, much, how much it does matter that we're closed to people. And I know it's a little bit perhaps cynical, but making sure that people remember that when it's time to decide whether we're worth spending any tax money on. Um, you know, but really just getting it that there's only so much you can do and um, that that's okay. That's great, Annie. And uh, hi, Annie. I met you at ARSL before. Yes, hello. <laughs> hi. Um, and not, and I, what I tell people is that we're important, but we're not essential right now. And that's what I, and I keep telling my staff that too, that that's okay. Just right now, what's essential is for everyone surviving. And that's right. it. Well, I always try to remind myself it's important with a small I, not a capital I. And thanks everyone for all of your suggestions. I appreciate that very much. This is Judy from Smithville, Texas. Um, one of the things about our essential status, I think we will be very essential again when it's time to reopen and when it's time to help everybody get ready. And I think it was Kara Bauman that shared the um, public service return to work plan, the stage plan in email yesterday. And that's very helpful of just a way to look at how we can gradually get back to the day that we open again and get slammed with a lot of people with a lot of needs. So um, in, in all this, trying to plan for how that is going to look is very important for us. I, earlier today, uh, at the recommendation of another library, actually had a sort of staff potluck, virtual potluck, where there was no business, and it was an opportunity for people who could remote in or wanted to call in, could just eat whatever they happened to have, um, and just talk about stuff other than the library, checking in with each other, no obligation, like if you're too busy or you've got a project going on, you know, a lot of people are apparently doing home projects and yard projects, and that's more productive than I actually feel being here nine to five most days. Um, Cause I'm the only one here and it's just, it's no business and it's just a chance to, to connect with each other. But we're also meeting virtually every other week. My entire staff um, is on paid administrative leave. I'm here pretty much six days a week, nine to five, holding down the fort, answering phone calls, doing what we can, but also um, making sure that they, and my board feel like they have some understanding of what's going on, but also doing, you know, giving them the opportunity, you know, we're meeting virtually every two weeks, like in the next two weeks, be thinking about what are some small things and large things that we can do. You know, it's like, it's all about how we do things and what, what we do and how we do it, but never losing fact of the why we're doing things. What are other ways that we can accomplish that thing that we want to accomplish that adds to this feeling of safety and certain things, having them be part of the solution rather than it coming down from on high being part of that brainstorming. Um, I think it's going to be helpful, especially for my folks that really thrive with a lot more structure than they do flexibility because there's people all along that spectrum. And the idea that a procedure that they've had for years decades in some cases might not might not only be changing but potentially changing on a daily basis as we figure out what works and what doesn't because we'll be down for a minimum of six weeks before we reopen and it's going to be a strange scary world when we reopen um also dealing with the fact that we've been down for six weeks so having them be part giving them an opportunity to think and to brainstorm and come together 
as a staff to be part of the, you know, informing the solutions that we do, I'm hoping will be very helpful because I'm not going to know it all, even with all these amazing, lovely brains of all these various Zoom meetings that I'm going to. Um, our community is different from every other one. Um, every community is different. And so what works in, you know, North Carolina or North Dakota is not going to work in Michigan or even just in our part of Michigan. So having them all be part of it so that we can figure out, even if it's simple things like turning our barcode scanner around so that patrons are scanning their own card and their own books and it's only the DVDs that have to change hands because we have them stored behind the desk. Or um, our local grocery store has panels of acrylic hanging on fishing line from the ceiling to be a clear with no grid or anything separating. Um, between patron and customer, but it's functionally a sneeze guard. Like I've got a couple staff members who are making masks and reaching out and saying, what colors do you want? What patterns do you like? And being part of it together, I think is going to be helpful. And it gives them something to focus on with this idea of there, there is a future and there is a place where we can get back to some sense of normal and how can we do that together? So that's something that we've done. So oh, um, this is Bailey uh, from Altus. I just kind of want to take a moment to um, thank you, Cindy, so much for sharing. Um, to ask, like, what is everybody balancing on top of working from home? Um, I know not everybody may be working from home with kids, but you might be living with parents, or you might have dogs, or you know, you might. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff when you're at home that you're trying to balance. And I know for me personally, it's my two young girls and. Uh, we just got a new puppy, so, um, and it's really cute puppy, but it's still an, an added thing on trying to also work, focus, and, um, and check in with myself. How am I doing? And then how am I doing for my girls? How am I being there for them and for my staff and uh, for my community? And so I want to know how other people are, are balancing everything. <laughs> This is Jennifer in Gainesville, Texas. Um, I'm really struggling because I'm home while my staff is still at the library because I have a heart condition. So I am not allowed to work while they're having to work. So that's an added stress on top of what, you know, everybody else is doing. And they're still working. We're offering like a pickup service um, to them. And some of my staff has been taken and reassigned to about a half a mile away from our testing tent. Um, they're given masks and they don't deal with the people who are being tested at our tent, but they're still at the hospital reporting three days a week. That's what's keeping their jobs. It's also really interesting because it's, I'm the only department that's had stuff taken because we haven't been open to the public since the 15th of March. So, we were okay for about two weeks and then the county judge stepped in and said, I actually control everyone now who works for the county. So if I ask you for staff, you'll give me your staff and that's what we'll do. So that's what we're doing. Um, it's been very unusual. I don't have anyone else. I'm relying very much on my sister. And it's, it's a very strange feeling to know I can walk the neighborhood in my small little town and I can walk around my pool in my beautiful backyard because it's nice in Texas the last couple of days. And it's, it's a very strange feeling to be completely solo and not have a hands-on, you know, you guys are talking about even doing virtual. My people are still working. So if we do anything, we'll do it by the phone and I'll call and say, okay, how's things going? Or I try to send them lunch at least once a week and I pay for it because that's the least I can do with everything they're doing for me. I mean, in some ways they're the ones who are running the library right now and I'm not, and that's an interesting perspective, so. I'm here in New Jersey um, and we're in a different situation than what Jennifer is speaking of. And Jennifer, I can't even imagine how difficult that must be for you. But I know for us, it's been hard. We've heard there's been a couple of libraries. Libraries in New Jersey are completely um, independent. But a lot of us have our bills paid by our municipalities. 
And we've had a couple of cases where the municipality has decided that they are furloughing all of the staff without consultation with the library board who is in charge or with the library director. So that's like a really big fear right now. So there's just dealing with so much uncertainty. So this is Jenny again, I'll chime in. Um, our, ba our balance um, is that we're in a build multi-use building and some of you may have heard this last week, we're running a childcare program out of our building um, for emergency workers and healthcare providers um, that's slowly growing and trying to um, staff that. Our rec center staff does most of that, but we have two full-time library staff employees working there as well. Um, one is a teacher, so she's writing curriculum for them and trying to um, and the other one of the rec staff is also an educator. So they're doing some school work now, which I don't know how the kids are feeling about that. But um, she said they're not going to go through this without having school. Um, so just figuring out how to make that operate. And I got to be a part of the task force to put that together, um, what it was going to look like in the rules for health and CDC guidelines. So, so that's pretty insane. So I just became the branch manager of, of my library branch in Southeast Washington, yeah, Southeast Washington. Um, and that's been weird um, because I don't really have like a branch to manage necessarily. We're kind of like a work from home as much as you can kind of deal, like do what you can from home. Like one of my people does have internet though, so she can't really work from home. Um, so it's weird to, to have made that transition in the middle of this from, I mean, I know what to do on paper and I've been shown what to do on paper, but actually physically doing some of just like the random managerial tasks, it's, this is a weird time to be doing that transition. Caitlin, I totally feel you. This is Mary from North Dakota again, and uh, I rolled out a whole new organizational chart in mid-February and we started shifting people into new positions and now they're working from home and they've got a foot in both positions and it's, it's kind of cumbersome for people, but uh, you know, we're just taking it one step at a time and asking people for grace for us, as well as we're trying to give them grace themselves, but it's definitely a hard time to be transitioning into new positions. So if there is, any way that we can help you reach out to your arsenal peeps because you know we're here to even if it's just to hold your hand and be like girl you got this you're doing it or guy for those guys on the call too being here is really helpful like listening in is helpful i'm so glad to hear that and i um i can't imagine starting at this juncture of where everything's going on when i first became a director at a library about three and a half years ago. Um, I remember seeing the ARSL, something come across my listserv in Tennessee. And I was like, is this fake? Is this a real thing? <laughs> and um, it was verified. It was a real thing. And it quickly became my saving grace in all things library because um, I sent a million questions and everybody was just so gracious and supporting. And um, just being able to do this right now is uplifting and very encouraging. I'm in a weird place right now because I was, um, I've been at this particular library for 12 years in various librarian roles and what have you. And I had only been deputy director for about six months when I walked in and didn't even have a chance to put my purse down before we were served a search warrant by the local sheriffs and our director was under investigation for embezzlement. And so I swiftly became acting director and then interim director, co-interim director, back to interim director, and I've been in the director role for about three or four years now. Um, my contract actually expired on March 31st, two weeks after we closed, and we canceled our board meeting because we didn't, as a municipal entity, the midst of a public meeting is not when you want Zoom to fail and you suddenly have an unadvertised closed meeting. Um, so we postponed it and in conversation with my personnel committee, um, I have a few board members, including on my personnel who don't like, they're, they're not a huge fan of my particular management style. So there are some members of my board who are actually advocating to not renew my contract. And so in the midst of all of this, 
I'm looking at that and I've received a, a temporary non-contract extension through the end of June, but it's really hard to make any plans when I have no idea if I'm going to even be here, let alone looking for another job in the next three months. Um, because for a certain extent, nobody's hiring right now. Um, and it's a very strange place to be in. Um, and I'm hoping that this won't be the case. I, I don't want this circumstance to be what changes some of their minds, but I'm thinking to the certain part, now is not the time to be introducing or well, vacating the top position, trying introducing a new person who's not familiar with the community, the library, and who you have no idea what their strengths and weaknesses are. So um, it's definitely a weird place to be in, um, but I'm trying to find the grace in it that's making me understand the struggles of the many, many millions of people who are suddenly without a job and without a paycheck uh, in a way that I wouldn't have before. Um, but um, I'm, like I said, I'm hoping that the director with known certain weaknesses, which they've said is only my particular management style, um, and not financial or anything else, I promise, uh, and being the public face of the library, blah, 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 um, that uh, who's already successfully led them through not just a millage campaign, but a millage increase campaign, and out of one crisis and through a recession, um, that they'll be willing to look on me favorably right now, which feels so weird to be saying, um, given the circumstances. But um, yeah, it's it's a very strange thing to be experiencing at the same time. I feel like I'm doing so much of what I came into this field to do, so. Well, yes, I think uh, <laughs> there's just an awful lot going on in the world. Um, I'm really grateful for all of you who are letting this all get out there. I think it's been, I know it's been helpful for me to kind of realize that I'm not alone and that others may have way more serious problems than I do. Um, so it's it's been interesting to read the chat and just try and keep up um, right feeling so blessed um, right i would have to add jane one thing that i have noticed in the chat is how extremely supportive everybody is and encouraging and um, regardless of whether maybe what I'm experiencing isn't as bad what somebody else is experiencing or vice versa, you're still experiencing it and it's still very real to you. And what's so encouraging is that there's still people willing to reach out and say, hey, I'm here to walk alongside you and carry that burden with you however I can. Or I'm here to just say, you know what, that sucks. And I don't have an answer. I don't know what's going to change, but it sucks. And so I'm here to suck it up with you. Because <laughs> um, I think it's so hard to not have a, let me go research for you. And I'm going to provide this resource for you that's going to fix everything because it's kind of in our blood to be able to do that. And I have noticed what's helped me and I'm trying to do for other people is I just, yeah, that, that, that's really tough. That's really hard. And, you know, what do you, how can I be there for you or what do you need? And so I'm, I'm encouraged to see that going on in the chat as well. I love that emotional validation. Um, somebody just said that in the chat to what you said, Bailey. And um, I put in the chat also a, a TED or a podcast by Brene yeah. Brown that she now has that is um, called Unlocking Us. And one of her first ones was called about comparative suffering and how we need to be validated for our emotions and realize that maybe some days we might only have 25% to give to someone else, but if we can all work together, we might be able to get to 100%. And I loved that whole thought. So if, if you look up Brene Brown and that, you'll find it.
Yes, and there's that link again to that discomfort you're feeling is grief. Bailey and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, and um, that article is definitely worth your time. And also, um, I wanted to read this that um, a friend of mine sent today that um, living through a pandemic is trauma. And a trauma specialist has said, I think there are a few things that are helpful to know. Parts of our brain have shut down in order for us to survive. Oh yeah, I definitely know that. Um, as a result, we're not able to fully process a lot of what is going around, uh, around us. Feeling somewhat numb and out of touch with our emotions is normal, especially if you've lived through trauma before. Some people are also more apt to feel hypervigilant or anxious, while others become hypoactive or depressed. Neither means anything other than indicating your predisposition to dealing with extreme stress. In-depth processing of trauma happens years later when we feel emotionally safe to deal with it. And I think, well, there's gonna be a lot of that going on for sure. <laughs> When in the midst of trauma, just getting by emotionally and functionally is okay. Uh, Kate spoke to this earlier too. Lowering expectations and being kind to yourself and others is vital. And I think this has, has really helped me. So I appreciate all of you and uh, we'll soldier on. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> this yeah. might be a good time, Jane and Bailey, for me to step in. This is Kate Laughlin, and I'm ARSL's executive director. Um, we're supporting having this series every Thursday at the same time for as long as we need it through this crisis. And so far, our board members have been kind about stepping up to co-facilitate this, and our office staff support it from the back end. That's uh, in this case, Nem, who's in the room, and, and me. And if you have attended the last two sessions, then you've really enjoyed it and gotten a lot out of it. And if you feel like you would be up to being a co-facilitator and you're an ARSL member or would like to become a member, would you please reach out to the ARSL office? And Nem will put the email address in the chat for everyone. Just let us know if you're interested either for this next one or for a future one. We would love to hear from you about that and we can connect you with the previous facilitators to get some tips and tricks. And again, it's very, it's well supported logistically by the ARSL office. So you would not be alone with that. Any other questions you have for ARSL and you're not sure who to ask, that same email address is, your, is the one to go to, info at arsl.org. Whatever the question is, we'll route it to the right people. <laughs> 